Put this in the file of, you could have seen this fucking coming from a mile away. And it was been less than two months, like seven weeks, some crazy crap like that. The WWE announced yesterday that they mutually agreed to part ways with Raw play-by-play -play commentator Adnan Verk. After like two months. He gone! And, I mean, what more could you really say about, like, the reaction to it? You knew this was coming. You had to know this was coming. And it's just a representation of just at times the lack of connection with reality of one person, and that's Vince McMahon. It's a reflection of the just really poorly thought out decisions that the CEO, chairman of the board, makes. It also speaks to me, in my opinion, of some of the real problems with the WWE in the now and the long term. While well, again, it's not necessarily manifesting on the balance sheet, there is that long term problem of this company someday is going to face a real problem because all of the key major decisions have to have Vince's imprint or fingerprints all over it. If he's removed from that picture at some point in time, this company's not going to know what the fuck to do. Although, I would also say, furthermore, you have the problem of, like, your CEO, it shouldn't be like a chief executive officer. They should be chief vision officer. The only time they should ever be living in the here and now is to talk about the stuff that they put into place several years back that are now just starting to manifest themselves, like the quarterly financials and things like that. Like, a CEO should always be thinking ahead. 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, 5 years, 10 years, etc. Like it should not be in this type of spot where they're making this type of decision. But, you know, I feel bad for Andon Burke because he was absolutely set up to fail here. And I talked about it, I think, like a month and a half ago when people were criticizing him and giving him a lot of shit. You know, the reality was, was, what the fuck did you expect? The guy I wasn't familiar with, didn't know the product. He's a guy that comes from the sports world, so while he might be a legit sportscaster, like it's an entirely different animal when you're talking about sports entertainment or professional wrestling. It's an entirely different animal when you're talking about you know pushing these types of narratives versus some of the narratives you typically have to push if you work for an ESPN or an MLB network or somebody like that. Like This is entirely different. And not only was he not ready for that, he wasn't even remotely ready for that. Like, just think back on just the sheer stupidity of this. Taking a guy who's never done wrestling play-by-play -play commentary on a major scale, and you're throwing him into the wolves immediately on Monday Night Raw. Like, who the fuck does this and think that's a good decision? It's one thing if you put him into the spot on NXT. Less pressure, lower viewership. It's a developmental group. So, you know, develop the commentator. You put him on main event or whatever. Or you start him off as a backstage interviewer. You start him off as a studio person. Like, you know, those things that would actually have fit and on verse skill sets. But instead, not only did the WWE not do that, they put him in the place where he was most likely to fail and was absolutely positively going to fail. It's like they intentionally set out to hire him just to fire him. Like, who fucking does that, Vince? Imagine this. Like, I equate it to a professional wrestling. And let's say you're a wrestler, all right? And let's say you've been working backyard shows for a couple of years and a couple of independent shows here and there. So that's what you've been doing. And all of a sudden, you get a call from WWE, and they say, hey, you know what? Uh, we've been watching you. We think you bring something different to the table. Uh, we want you to main event Raw every week for the rest of the year. How's that sound? Now, first you're going to say, oh, holy shit, this is a payday for me. I can't fucking turn it down. But then you're also immediately going to know, I'm not fucking ready for that. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fall flat on my face. I'm going to look like a jackass here. I can't turn it down, but there's no way that this is going to turn out well. But you'll take it anyways. Right? And what would happen? You would fail and flop fucking miserably. 
and people would talk shit about you online, and in a couple of months, WWE would be future endeavoring your ass. That's exactly what they did with Verk here. Like, I mean, what's he going to do? Turn down the opportunity? No. Get paid. Get that money. You're not doing anything else. Why the hell not? Right? I don't, I don't, I don't begrudge him for that. I don't knock that decision. But he had to know, especially when they were saying, hey, we're going to throw you to the wolves on Raw. He had to know that if he didn't get up to speed very quickly, this was very likely to not go very well for him at all. And it most sure as hell did not. Well, you would think, though, that you wouldn't want to put one of your flagship shows at risk with such an important role as a commentator, like a play-by-play -play commentator especially, who is there to help tell the story that's here, there to push the agenda, the company line, the narrative, that's there to help push the talent. Like, why would you take such an important role and put it at such an unnecessary risk? That's a really dumb, stupid-ass decision by Vince McMahon. It absolutely is. This is totally on him. This is totally at his, his fault. And just as incredibly poorly thought out. Like, what did you think he was going to bring to the table that a Vic Joseph did it? Especially when you did nothing to help prepare him for this. Like, you would think, as you're running a company, you would think, as you're putting together an entertainment brand, a product like this, that you would take that approach or that philosophy of, I want to put people in the best possible situations to succeed. Because if I put them in the best possible situations to succeed, they're going to be the best versions of themselves. They're going to be the best performing versions of themselves. They're going to give me the best results. Instead, Vince, it almost seems like strategically, seeks out ways to make people uncomfortable, put them in situations that they're ill-equipped and ill-prepared for, because he wants them to be uncomfortable and sets them up for failure. Like, who the hell does this? Who does this? Apparently, Vince McMahon does. And it's really clown school shit. Like, you basically sacrifice one of your flagship shows so you could sit there and do fantasy camp for Adnan Verk to find out whether or not he could be the commentator. And then you don't even give him two months. And you say mutually part ways. You know, this is more of an example of Adnan Verk probably realized, hey, they're not helping me here. Working and having Vince McMahon in my fucking ear all the time absolutely sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. I wasn't ready for this. And then WWE is like, he sucks. He wasn't prepared for this. We don't want him to do it. There's the mutual part of it. But you didn't even really give him a chance to succeed once you put him in that spot. Like, who the hell would want to work for this company at this point other than to chase some type of short-term, higher payday because you know you're going to be set up to fail. You're going to be totally at the mercy of the whims of an increasingly senile, out-of-touch, mid-70s-year-old Vince McMahon. Like, even guys that had come up through, like, your development or maybe had worked other places, it's going to get the, take them time to get adapted to and adjusted to the WWE style, the WWE format, the WWE way of telling stories, etc. So even if Adnan Verk was prepared, you certainly can't evaluate that in less than two fucking months. What the hell are you doing putting him in this position and then pulling the rug out from under him so damn quickly? Unbelievably ridiculous. I feel bad for him in some sense. I mean, he got paid by the WWE for the while, and I'm sure it wasn't a small amount, so, you know, not a lot of tears there for that, but I don't like seeing people being put in situations to fail, and that's exactly what happened here, and everybody could see this coming, or should have seen this coming. There was no way that this was going to turn out well. And at this point, you have to wonder, like, how much worse is it going to get? Because every time you turn around, Vince is tinker tinkering with something. Vince is fucking up something. Vince is trying to change something. Like, that's part of the problem. When you start to talk about a CEO getting to a certain level in age, you know, they get impatient. Because they're older, they know their clock is ticking. Think about Al Davis with the Raiders for years. He made a really lot of bad, dumb, stupid-ass decisions the last decade or so of his life, or most of the last decade or so of his life, in part because he was panicking, in part because he knew his clock was ticking. Lots of nearsighted, short-sighted type of decisions that were all really, really bad. And now you've got Vince doing that same damn thing. Like, this is a representation of a much bigger problem. Which, like I said, at the moment, you could, you could gloss over and you can hide. 
because you can focus on the balance sheet and you talk about the record profits. You could be distracted by the fact of, hey, they're consolidating stuff in the corporate structure and they're firing more people because greed and because stupidity. But decisions like this just point to like just how bad off from a creative standpoint this company actually is right now, how bad off that raw brand is, and how this is not going to change, this is not going to get any better, even if Vince is gone. Like if you think it's gonna be better when Vince is gone, you're a clown. Because if anything, it's going to be worse because it's gonna leave a huge vacuum at the top because nobody, including God himself, ugh, or Stephanie, his daughter, or Shane, his son, will have any idea of what the fuck to do because they've never been put in that position to actually make that level of those types of decisions. What's the over-under on the next commentator for Raw, the next play-by-play -play guy? Is it three months? Is it four? What are the betting odds? Can't imagine bringing in somebody that's totally ill-equipped and ill-prepared to do it, and then you do it, and then you're ready to get rid of them in less than two months. Like, this is a monster entirely and totally of Vince's creation, and he deserves every bit of criticism he could possibly get for it because it was just dumb shit stuff all the way the hell around.